Got a hand from Hustler five five one K cap eight handed. Hustler five five one K cap. Now, this is I just you know, it's worse than when I lived there, but I have played in this game recently. The pro the issue with Hustler, I love going out there to do commentary and I love doing uh you know, playing on those Thursday games, and I'll do it once a month. For whatever reason, though, they don't really have big no limit games at night. I think they play five ten during the day, as Peter stay in school and Mark squish my tomato goon would tell me. But like, when I get out of there, like on a Friday, like after doing two hundred, four hundred no limit commentary, and I'm off, I want to play some like, you know, decent sized poker. And they only fucking have five five one k cap for no limit, so I end up probably usually playing PLO. But what I was going to say is obviously the the drop structure here is brutal in LA, although I think in Hustler, it's actually $1 less than I think in some of the other places. Great GM over there, Sean Yapel, too, pointed that out to me when I tweeted <laughs> complaining, but um, you definitely need to watch your preflop strategy in this game, put it that way. Okay. So how deep are you guys? Pretty deep. Uh, we're 1.6k effective. Okay. Okay. And this particular villain, very high VPIP, pretty much playing every hand. Uh, he raises from the hijack to 20 okay. over a couple of limps. Okay, so a couple of limps. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, just, just right off the bat, what I say here is, is that I, I, don't, I don't even remember what hand you have. Um, but just this is a straight out of, this is the hijack, right? Straight out of small stakes exploit guide. I don't know what number it is, but that's something that I did several months ago. I said, one of the things that you can notice in live poker, especially if you want to expand your three betting range is that when somebody raises to an amount that is usually an open size over several limbs, it is rarely a strong hand unless they know, unless they're trying to induce like a three bet. Um, because if people are just opening the 20, it just isn't usually all that strong. So that's number one. So, okay, where are you in the hero? Hero three bets from the cutoff okay. to 125, okay. kind of large sizing, uh -huh. with ace of diamonds, ace of clubs. Well, that's an easy one. Where you don't have to do it too light. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. okay. I mean, this is funny that you went to 125 because, yeah. man, if I had told you what I just said, what, if you knew what I, you know, listen to what I just said about what I interpret this raise as, what, what do you think that I would say about your three bet sizing here? Probably too big. We, we want to size down. I would, I would tend days. to size down here, to be honest yeah. with you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, yeah. that would be my that would be my take here from this one. But okay, so you go to 125. Yep. And hijack calls. We take it heads up. Pod is 270. Flop is 10 of diamonds, 6 of diamonds, 4 of hearts. Hijack checks. Hero bets 100 and hijack calls. So hero bets 100 into like 260, hijack calls. You guys are 1600 effective. And then again, we got this little quirk. This is not, I'm not, it's not 100%. I was just kind of trying to say, oh, I wonder if this is going to come into play, this open size to the, of the hijack, because I was going to just say right off the bat, like, do people usually just make it 20, the standard open size over several limbs with 10, 10? Now, we don't know that. I mean, obviously, he defended to your to your three bet, to your large three bet. Um, I mean, you have aces with the ace of diamonds. I'm certainly going to certainly gonna build. I mean, what I would say is, is that almost like the 20 is more consistent with the juicer raise with smallish types of pocket pairs here, like sixes and fours. I sometimes see that too, but just a little thing of note. So 100 call... And uh, now the pot is 325. Uh, pot's or a little more. A little more than that. It's, okay. 340 yeah, or something. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Turn is the queen of spades. And this is where it kind of goes off the rails. Hijack leads into us 325. Wow. Yeah. Right. So he leads for 325. Right. I was. Yeah, and okay. I I was a little surprised. Well, it's I, definitely what... it's it's definitely very very odd, right? Like the check call lead in a three bet pod. I mean, it wasn't like you use ridiculously small sizing. It's just not right. a thing that you see really reflected. 
So right. what would I be thinking about here? I'd be thinking, well, you know, I, I would just, just just a little bit off off the bat here. I'd be like, okay, well, some once in a great while, you know, somebody thinks who are not overly thinking players that, you know, they pick up top pair in a diamond draw or something like that. They think it's the nuts, but you've got the ace of diamonds. Although even still, like, I don't know if like queen jack of diamonds leads like this. So what is the queen change? It doesn't really change much at all. Right. Because mm -hmm. if there's a guy, I mean, honestly, like how often are you going to see somebody take a really, really small three bet size over several limps with queen, queen, call your raise, and then donk out with queen-queen when they make it on the turn. Very, very rare. So the other thing would be like queen-10 suited. Like, again, kind of rare. I'd almost be more concerned with some sort of weirdish type of line with sixes and fours, although, you know, of course he should be probably trying to go for check raise with those hands. But, I mean, I think the play here is to call and see what the fuck this guy is doing, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I thought pretty much the same thing. Um, okay. So hero calls. So right under twelve hundred, I've got it at eleven ninety. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. River is kind of a bad card, I think. It's the four of diamonds, so a lot comes in. Four of diamonds. Okay. By the way, also too. So it pairs the board brings front door diamonds. Also, you know he could have diamonds with a like a straight draw. Like some people are saying, like queen jack of diamonds, maybe something like that jack nine mm. of diamonds you know mm. um you know you're calling here let's just move back to the turn because i washed it over so it's 1190 and it looks like you've got what 1100 left so you actually only have about a pot size bet left on the yeah. turn right mm -hmm. yeah so let me just go back here because i did wash over that would there ever be a case here for i i think you're still a little bit too deep though to just like jam um yeah. i mean personally i think i would call a lot yeah. here now if you were a little bit shallower then by all means then 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 fine but i, I mean i do like your call so we moved the river it's the four diamonds it pairs the board brings the front door diamond draw but of course it gives less combos of a hand like four four now too mm -hmm. yeah so hijack very quickly moves all in hijack all in and of course you have the ace of diamonds in your hand that's right right mm -hmm. so I mean, I can tell you what the theory would say that if it was between aces with the ace of diamonds and aces without the ace of diamonds, that aces with the ace of diamonds would be a square call. And, you know, if this hand on paper, the way that this went down, I think would be a square call. Would I ever make an exploitable type of fold? Now, I see some people say in the live chat, well, if he has queen 10, now he's counterfeit. Yeah, but the thing is, is that queen 10 now, for the same reasons, are, are, is not jamming the, the river to like represent a boat you know, after the hero has called and called, it's just kind of happy to like check down. I, I, that is going to be such a rare thing that I, I almost throw that out the window. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you started thinking about my, what is the turn? What is the turn lead range here? What check calls and then leads turn well, thick value hands. Like if you turn queen 10, but we're saying we're going to throw that out at the end. And then like a set of sixes, a set of fours, which now there are less of, and then, as we said, the kind of weird preflop sizing with like 10, 10, but of course diamonds get there. So it's like a situation where people are saying, well, if he's leading out on the turn with a picked up straight draw and diamonds, now diamonds here get here at the end. This one's pretty close, man. This one's really, really close. Like I said, I mean, ace is no diamond, I think is, you know, I can de definitely get on board where it's like, you're not beating much, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But again, on paper, it's like, if you could ever put this into this, this is a weird line, right? And to put into like a sim, because I don't think anything is going to be check call pawning the turn really much. Like, in the, I don't think there's any, it's like a sliver of like one in a million type of thing. Um, so, you know, the hands off the rails anyway. So I, I just kind of go with my experience. And uh, I would say this is probably under bluffed a little bit. And I don't, do you have any history with this kind of guy? Is he like, does he ever do any maniacal shit here? Yeah, that's a good question because what I, what I sort of keyed in on was this particular villain was visiting from out of town. Cause I'm, I'm very familiar with the player pool at hustler and he was an attorney from Iowa. So struck me as very recreational. 
his style was very much someone who's there to play, very high VPIP. But even with those factors, in this game, at our stack depths, I just I rarely see someone make that kind of sizing on the river light. Yeah, I, let's, I, I never see it. No, I understand. I think the actually what is one of the more important parts of this hand besides the sort of off the rails turn up front bet is actually what your flop sizing was as a C bet. And the reason why I say that as you went to the flop at right around 260, you bet 100. So it wasn't so crazy small. But I think sometimes when people use small flop sizing, they lose out. Like, say, for example, you bet instead of betting like, you know, 100 into 250 or 260 or what it was, like you bet 70, okay? And the guy called. People lose out on that little bit where because they bet so small on the flop, you get called by these backdoorish types of hands and even hands that might not even aren't even supposed to call because the guy thinks you're just sort of full of shit when you bet 70 into 260. So you might see a hand like King Jack offsuit if that's defended three bet to a three bet where he's actually ends up with nothing on the river and he's bluffing the diamond. But mm. your sizing wasn't like that small. Right. Like you went one into 260. I, I swear like... If you went 70 into 260, my needle from being like a little bit less than 50-50 here from for calling the river would go up to like 70%. That's the key inflection point, I feel like, when you get to this river. When you use tiny, tiny bet sizing on the flop, people end up with more air at the end. Now, again, the turn play is sort of off the rails, so... <sighs> It's it's uh, yeah. I mean it's it's very very close, very very close. Someone said you have the best bluff, you know, catching hand in theory with the diamonds. Yes, and I would probably tend to fold even more with black aces. What ended up happening here? So I tank folded face up to get him to show, and he shows jack nine off. Yep. Hero so got us. so jack nine off. I mean, that's what we're saying. Like it would have to be like that straight draw that didn't really have anything um, that maybe kind of interpreted your side. Cause like I said, this is why I would make the call for sure. If you bet 70 on the flop, cause I think you're going to see way more reflection of those types of things. I don't know if you remember if you even had a diamond here, but this is where you can get a little bit tricky. Not that you size all that small, but the whole hand mm -hmm. is, fairly consistent with, oh, he made it 20 over the top of limps. And now he defended to your 125 with Jack nine off. And then this is just one of these things where not that you get a chance to play with this guy again, but you know, you got to chalk it up mentally and ch chalk it up mentally. If you're ever in a situation with this guy again, where it's just like, yeah, we're never going to make folds in that spot. Right. Against him. Um, but uh, definitely an interesting one for sure. Van who tough, tough hand. Um, thank you very much for the call. You're welcome. Thanks, Bart. Yep.